Welcome to the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast, a podcast where we teach speakers how to land paid speaking engagements and corporate contracts. Each week, we deliver high quality content that teaches you how to level up your speaking business. Be sure to join the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group after having your mind blown by this information filled episode. Now, here's your host, Ashley Kirkwood, lawyer and professional speaker. This is the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, you guys. So I am going to be talking today about what I've learned after 20,000 sales calls. And let me just tell you how this came about. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone who is listening to this on the Speaker Ready Cash podcast. For those of you who are joining me live from other sources, welcome, welcome. My name is Ashley Kirkwood. I'm the owner of Mobile General Counsel, which is a law firm for seven and eight figure brands. We also help other business owners who are looking to build big brands to protect them. Um, and I also run Speak Your Way to Cash, which is the premier community for speakers and entrepreneurs who are looking to start at the very top of the speaking market versus working their way up from the bottom. We're the only pro program on the market that teaches you really how to sell those five and six figure corporate contracts and package them through licensing and some other creative techniques that I have developed through the paid methodology. So, you know, I love all things, all things, honestly, all things excellence, right? So when you join me in my law firm or in Speak Your Way to Cash, we are big thinkers, forward thinkers. We're all about protecting the vision. So I wanted to talk to you guys about something from my past. It's like a blast from the past. Prior to going to law school, prior to starting my companies, I worked as an inside and outside sales rep. And my job at one particular place that I worked, so outside sales, I did that as an intern for like Philip Morris and a few other companies. I worked full time for a bit, like 40 hour weeks for a bit as in um, doing sales at Enterprise. And then I also did an inside sales job for a company called Acquirant, where my job was essentially to make 100 plus sales calls a day. And I did this for a little under a year. And I tallied this all up, folks. And it all equaled, it all tallied up to be a around 20,000 sales calls that I made at that one job, not including any other sales job that I had. And when I think about foundationally, the problem that a lot of my clients have, both on the, particularly on the speaking side, but even in my firm, most people are like, okay, how do I generate additional revenue in my business? And the key to that question is always going to be sales. But there are some sales principles that I have learned over the years that I want to talk to you all about. And then, of course, we're going to invite people up for questions. And so if you're listening to this and you have questions, feel free to email them to Ashley at AshleyNicoleKirkwood.com. If you're joining me on Clubhouse, you can just raise your hand. And after I get through this good, juicy content, we'll go right into questions. So number one, my background. I went to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, then went on to law school at I graduated from law school at, from Northwestern University School of Law, but first went to another law school called John Marshall Law School. It's in Chicago. And the way that your income projections work as a law student, for those of you who don't know, is the better ranked the law school, the more money you make. Like the average salary out of my first law school was like $56,000 at the time. Maybe it was $60,000, right? The average salary out of Northwestern Law was $160,000 at the time. And then it went up to like $190,000 now, I believe. And the way that I was able to get into Northwestern from John Marshall, which is a lower ranked law school, was sales. It was literally sales. Like everything in your life that you are trying to talk people into doing for you is essentially you selling them on an idea or a concept. So for anyone listening to this that feels like, oh, I don't need to understand sales or it's not a very important part of what I do, even if you are a corporate leader and you are trying Trying to motivate a team, you are still selling them on a vision. So after I sold Northwestern on letting me transfer there, I graduated and worked at a firm called uh, Kirkland and Ellis full time. But prior to starting at Kirkland, they said, you know, I couldn't work there. They didn't hire me right out of law school or they didn't hire me as an intern to summer there while I was in law school. So I had to devise a plan to, again, sell them on hiring me. And the way that looked was by, and I'm. this all sounds like background, but I'm promising you there's actually a, a really good principle that I'm going to teach you all about this. I first figured out who, when, when Kirkland initially told me when I was in law school, 
This is some background story that's going to lead to a principal. When they initially told me that they were not going to hire me as a summer intern, my first reaction was, okay, excellent. I got the contact information of the people that were interviewing me and I vowed and I asked them a question. I was like, do you mind if I call you and allow you to guide me on where I should work. Because if you guide me on where I should work, it'll help me make better decisions. You're already such a successful attorney, blah, 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 right? They were like, oh, of course, even though we can't hire you, I'm happy to help you make your decision. The critical element there was I needed the person who told me no to understand that other people were always going to tell me yes, okay? So the number one principle, when you all are thinking about selling to your clients and your prospects and whoever you're selling to or your team members, they need to understand that there are other people that are always going to be buying into the concept of you or whatever it is that you're selling. So I do this. I ended up getting like six or seven job offers to work at other large law firms. And I specifically went and worked at competitors of the firm that I wanted to work at. And I did that because there's something called the Jones method of selling, right? If you're taking notes on this, just write the Jones method of selling down. It's essentially this method of selling that says the the core concept is if you can show the person that you are attempting to sell that other people that are similarly situated to them have bought into your idea, concept or product, they are much more likely to buy from you. So the reason when my number one law firm dream job out of law school told me no, my next step was getting a job at their biggest competitor. So I took the job at their biggest competitor. At the time, firm names don't matter because most of you aren't like, you're like, I don't know these firms. So it was another large law firm in Chicago, a very competitive firm. Michelle and Barack Obama met there. It's it's the firm's claim to fame for me. <laughs> I'm sure they would disagree, but that's like why I like, <laughs> why I was so impressed with the firm as a, as a law student. So I go and work at this other firm. And after my summer there, I go back to the original firm that told me no. And they hire me on because they're like, oh my gosh, this is a great opportunity to poach from one of our biggest competitors. And I think the the principle there, this Jones method of selling basically states, if you, it, like the whole point of what we do is to earn trust. All of you on here have heard about n- no like, and trust. Like if most of you have heard of that before, okay? And the point of that really is that what you want to do when you are trying to convince someone of something, someone who does not know you, you have to show them that other people that are similarly situated trust you. And the idea is then they will trust you too. And what data shows is that we are more likely, of course, to buy from referrals. Even if you don't have a referral, like I tell someone to go and buy from your company, if you can name a company that is similarly situated, it's so powerful. So to bring this home in real time for a lot of you who are listening, because I see some folks who are in the Speaker Ready Cash Academy there, what that looks like is if your first five clients were all in one particular industry, I am going to tell you to pitch to all of their competitors, as long as there's no non-compete provisions preventing you from doing so, because you can literally utilize the Jones method of selling and get yourself into a variety of other companies solely because people compete. They compete. And you want to, you know, some people, they lean out of competition. They're like, oh, competition is bad. I don't compete. I never compete. Why would I do that? No, 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 no. Whether you are in the game or you're not, you are competing. And there are a variety of people that do what you do. And so it's your job not to hard sell or convince people that you're the best option, but to show, like prove, like show them that you're the best option by way of your, you know, we say receipts, but by, but by way of the other people that you've served that are like them, who you've also helped to get a result. So it's, it is a way to utilize the power of referrals without actually having a referral. So because I have done work for a large pharmaceutical company, every other pharmaceutical company that I pitch, I can talk about the work that I've done for this pharmaceutical company without ever saying like, and here's all the written reviews, which I do have. But even if I didn't, I could still utilize this Jones method of selling to sell them on that. So I wanted to start with explaining this Jones method of selling, right? But before, okay, before I even went to law school, before I utilized these principles in my day-to-day life, I worked in inside sales and I made all these sales calls. So my, my job, this is my job every day, guys. I want you all to imagine this. My job every day was to show up at work with a good attitude, 8 a.m. And I, and I, here's the thing. I traveled two hours to get to this job. I lived in like Chicago at the time, but I was working in Evanston. So I had to take like two trains and a bus to get to work. It was a lot. And I would travel two hours to get to work. And then when I got to work, I had an 8 a.m. meeting. We had an 8 a.m. team meeting every single morning at this sales job. 8 a.m. team meeting 
every single morning. And the day started off with 15 minutes of motivation and inspiration. Sometimes the CEO of the company would do it. Other times he would bring in guest experts to do these 15 minute power chats. And the whole point of starting every single salesperson's day off like this was solely to motivate them and get them in the right mind space to do the job. For some people, The reason that we aren't, so we talked about the Jones method of selling. Here's the second thing. There are certain routines that you need to do to get yourself in the mind space of winning. And the routine that you do has to be set up just right, not to be a distraction, but to actually fuel your growth. So for me, in my entrepreneurship world, that has looked like what I I don't do those 15 minute huddles anymore because it's not a huge team of us and we're all working virtually. But what I would do is listen to affirmations, listen to podcasts while I work. Listen to one of the podcasts that I love listening to that I'd recommend for you all if you're trying to get yourself in the right headspace is How I Built This by Guy Reyes. There's another thing I started listening to recently. My friend Ash started it. It's Mind Right Radio. It's 24 hours of inspirational speeches over hip hop beats. But literally, it's like speeches from Oprah, E.T. He had a Yama Van Zandt that he did a, a something for. So Mind Right Radio is something I've started to listen to frequently. But you need to do something to get yourself in the right headspace. That's super, super, super critical. Okay. So the third thing we're going to cover, and I think there's really five things I'm going to cover before we open it up to just straight questions. I'm going to get through this content. The third thing I want to cover, you have to chase and be prepared for the no. So when I work this job doing these 120 sales calls every single day, day in and day out, I was told no over a hundred times. If during the course of a day, five people said either yes, or they wanted more information, I was happy. And I would, I would reach my sales quota. So I was waking up every single day, literally chasing down the no's. The quicker people would opt out or take take themselves out of my process while doing this, because this is like hardcore inside sales. This is not what I do now, obviously. But the quicker they would take themselves out of that process, the better, because I knew I had to get at least 90 no's before people would even start saying yes. If they were interested in more information or following up, that's also good. I consider that a win. But for the most part, I'm calling people who did not know me and trying to convince them over the phone to give me their money. I was signing them up for what they call a fleet card. It was like a credit card for business owners who wanted to track their employees' fuel expenses. Basically, think of it like a debit card where you could like spy on what your employees do and don't do. Okay. So I had to get 90 no's a day. I was only getting told yes. Like if I got told yes five times a day, it was a huge win, like a huge, huge, huge win. But what I learned from that is that no doesn't hurt. Like it's not a big thing. The power of someone telling you no, it only can derail your future or derail your life or derail what you have going on if you allow it to stop you, which I I don't recommend. I think some people, I've had people come to me before and they're like, oh, I've tried to get paid to speak in the past. I've tried to land high ticket clients in the past, or I've tried to land a particular contract in the past. And they are upset. So like, it's not working. And I've done all these things. I've taken all these courses. Number one, taking courses is not doing the work. The other thing that we did at this sales job was six weeks of training, six weeks of training. Like, Six weeks of just training. That's all we did for six weeks was train on sales methodology, sales methods, overcoming objections, how to take people through a pipeline, learning how to utilize a CRM. It was all training. After that six weeks, we then had to go forth and make the calls. You know, getting the training, getting the information from these experts and coaches that you've hired is not you doing the work. That is solely you preparing yourself to get the yes. But you're going to get no's. And when people say they've tried to you know, get paid to speak or they've tried to run their business in the past and it didn't work, I always wonder how many no's did they get? Because think about it. If I'm doing 120 sales calls a day, 100, between 100 and 120, I didn't drop below like 100 ever. Like I was not doing that. And I was a top sales rep there. So I was making my calls. But if I'm doing 120 calls a day, like I'm doing over 20,000 calls and 90 people a day are telling me no. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's a crazy amount of no's. I'm getting, um, we're talking about like 70,000 people have told me no. You know what I mean? Like not even 70,000 of of 20,000 sales calls, but like if we're doing those sales calls every single day, hundreds of people a day are likely to tell me no. Hundreds of people a day. That's thousands of people a month that are telling me no. And what I find is that entrepreneurs give up if like 50 people tell them no. 
And that's just not enough no's. You just haven't been told no enough. And so for a lot of us, the only, only, only reason why we have not excelled at the level that we can is because we are chasing the yes versus chasing the no. And if you want to excel in sales, in developing a business, in in doing something on a high level excellently, you need to chase the no and don't look at it like it's a detrimental thing. And more importantly than chasing the no, because in my job at Inside Sales, right? Inside Sales, it was like, I got to chase the no, I got to get the no, and then I got to move on. But what you have the ability to do as an entrepreneur that has a more targeted list of people or a targeted identity of people that you want to serve and help is you can get a lot of data from those no's that will inform the way that you sell in the future. So instead of them just telling you no flat out because they don't want to buy your product, they can join your list. They can listen to your podcast. You can engage with them over time if you have the right processes and procedures in place and the right content that will help to convert them to to buyers later on down the line. Because what I realize people people do. And this is something that I think we take totally for granted, right? We take this for granted so much. I'm going to tell you guys what happened. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast. Real quick, I would love if you applied to work with us at Speak Your Way to Cash. In fact, I have created a short application that would let me know if you are the right fit. If you are a speaker looking to land five and six figure speaking contracts, you should 100% apply to be in the Speak Your Way to Cash Academy. And here's the beautiful thing. If you get accepted into the Academy, you are automatically able to listen to a two hour training where I break down the paid method that myself and my clients use to land five and six figure corporate speaking contracts. All you need to do to apply is go to ashleynicolekirkwood.com slash apply. Go to ashleynicolekirkwood.com slash apply. Again, go to ashleynicolekirkwood.com slash apply. Now, if you want to make it even easier and you're already on your phone, pull out your phone and text me. That's right. You can now text me directly to apply and to learn more about working with Speak Your Way to Cash. So you can text me at 312-847-4590. Again, 312-847-4590. Just text me apply to 312-847-4590. All right, guys, let's get back to this great episode. I've recently sold like, let me see, I think last, it may have been, I think it was last week or the week before we sold a multi six figure contract. Um, This particular contract was in the works though for a longer period of time. I'll just say that a longer period of time. What I have found people do when they buy from me on a high level, like they're signing on to my $15,000 a month legal package. And, and that is 15 K per month or 10 K per month or 5 K per month. Like we have monthly packages and that's, the, that's what they cost to be a client of our firm long term. So if they sign on to those packages, what I find a lot of them do is that they actually have binged content from years ago. And then when they come to me, they're already familiar with what we can offer and the style at which I work with people. So it's an easier sell. Um, More importantly, they know that we are competent enough to do the job. Something that we have put out into the world has shown them that. Testimonials from clients have shown them that. They've attended an event and it's proven that to them. So I'm not selling them on like, oh yeah, I'm actually a barred attorney or I actually graduated from a really good law school and I know what I'm doing or I've worked for billion dollar brands and won federal jury trials. All of these things are factually true. They already know most of that stuff already. They can like read a Forbes article on me and find that out. But even the Forbes article. That came from content being out there in the marketplace. So for some people, you think that when people tell you no, it is an opera. It's like, oh, it's so heart wrenching. It's so gut wrenching. But really, if you have other places to put them as like a placeholder, maybe it's your email list. Maybe it's them listening to a podcast. It's way better. So you could like, and I'll give you an example. We have a Speaker Ready Cash Academy. It launches January 19th. It's not 15000 a month. It's like, I think it's it's a fifteen or twenty thousand dollar program, um, and we take speakers through the process of building out their six figure corporate speaking offers and doing market research and doing all this other stuff that's going to really help them win big for life. Right, the, the stuff that they learn in the academy is lifetime value stuff. 
But let's say someone's like, man, I don't have it. I can't do that right now. I'm like, all right, cool. Well, I have a course. It's like $1,200. But look, here's the thing. I want you to go and listen to podcast episode 43, totally free. It's one of my favorite episodes. I dropped so many gems in that episode. I think you'll get a lot of value from it. Do you mind if I send that to you? What are they going to say? No, don't help me out. Don't send me content that can rad- content that can radically change the way that I do business. No, they're going to want to learn from that content. So instead of, because I think what happens is people get no and they're like, well, fine. They don't want to work with me. I don't want to work with them. And it's like, no, you need to find out where they're at in their journey and how stuff that you've already created can serve them on a high level. This is why, and this is a mindset thing too. This is why I do not believe when people say, you know, how do you sell packages for 180000 a year or $200,000 a year? Like, What about the people that can't afford it? People that cannot afford to work with me on the highest level that we offer, it's totally cool because we have so much free content. We have a free Facebook group. We have all these other things that cost them nothing to learn and to get wisdom from what we have to offer and what we have to provide. But in order for me to spend my one-on-one time taking you through a transformation, but in order for me to spend my one-on-one time taking you through a transformation, there has to be a fee for that because if there's not, I will get burnt out and I won't be able to serve those who have invested with me. And that's not fair to them. And it's not fair to me. I'm not graced to serve people like one-on-one for like $10. Like that's just not my thing. Other people are able to do that. They have a lot of one-to-many products. They sell thousands of people into like $10, $20 a month stuff. That's not how I roll. It's not how I operate. And I don't want people to discount the information that I'm giving them by putting them in a a cheap program and hoping that it transforms their life. The fact of the matter is this year, we probably spent, I don't even know how much you've spent on coaching. It was over uh, $60,000 to individual coaches, maybe 70. It's up there. And every time I invested with my coach, one of the things that I did, not even my coach, coaches, because I have several. Every time I invested, I paid in full. And it was really important to me to do that because I know that because I value time and I value my resources that I've built and money, right? I value time and I value money because I value both of them. If I make a big investment, I will hold myself accountable to that investment. So some of sometimes what you're doing by charging little bitty prices, and I don't, I mean, maybe little bitty is the wrong word, but by charging underneath the value of what you provide, that's like the politically correct way to say this, is you are asking people to undervalue what you have to offer. So they're not going to take the course. They're not going to take the class. They're not going to do the things that you want them to do. They're not going to listen to what you have to say because you've allowed them to undervalue it. So the price, when, when it comes to selling, a lot of people are like, oh, well, what should I price this at? Everyone asks me, what should I price this at? Literally, the number one question I get from speakers is how much should I charge for this? They never really ask me, what are the methodologies that you use to actually sell people <laughs> on working with you. Everyone wants to know about the price, but guess what? No one really cares about the price. I've sold people, like people have bought things from me, like a $10 ebook. I've, and I don't have this anymore, but we've had $30 a month stuff. Like they bought all that stuff. Let me tell you the easiest stuff to sell were multi six figure contracts to the right audience, to the right person at the right time. That was easier than selling, like even our $19 webinar. If you were to look in our inboxes, to see where our customer service questions and inquiries come from, 90% of them come from people who've spent less than $50 with our organization on the speaker rate of cash side. On the legal side, we don't, that's impossible to do. But on the speaker rate of cash side, they bought like a low ticket, like, I don't know, course or webinar somewhere, something that they uh, found online that we put out a while ago. No shade, no problem with buying those things, but there's a reason for that. There's absolutely a reason for that. The way your process is set up to sell people at a higher level for a higher price point, it answers a lot of those objections and it on onbo- it should onboard them in such a way that they're not asking you a whole lot of like questions that don't have, I don't want to, I'm going to just say dumb questions, right? You're not getting that at that price point. But there's just some mindset differences here. So what I would challenge every single person to do is to figure out at what level do I want to sell at? And then how can I take the people that I'm trying to sell through a very, very clear and concise process so that they're comfortable investing and buying on that level? And what am I going to provide? So your offer has to be good. The service has to be good. The transformation has to be good. Um, You need to be accessible. So I personally don't understand why the number one reason we, we've taken, I don't want to say taken, but 
<laughs> People come to our law firm after having worked with other law firms. One of the most recent, we've gotten a couple clients this week, even though I'm on vacation, I wasn't supposed to be working, but I did a little bit. So we've gotten a couple clients. And the real reason why they switched from their previous attorneys was that the attorney was not accessible. And it wasn't that the lawyer um, had to be accessible all the time. That's not it. That's not it at all. But it is that you know, if you're going to sell someone on a high level service product or offering, you need to at least have a system in place where they can reach you. Like, I mean, come on. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any people. People have call, like I've talked to clients who are now with us who are like, yeah, and I, I didn't even have a number to call my attorney. And I'm like, what? Like, it doesn't it just doesn't make sense. There are so many you need to have your stuff in order. So obviously, I am not a proponent of people charging a whole lot of money without systems because I have been there as a consumer. I've paid people a ton of money for a product or a service or an offering, and they were excellent at selling me into it. And then I could never reach them again, or they did a horrible job. And they were just like, oh, well, you're just being a difficult client. And it's like, no, you just don't have any systems in your business. So don't do that, right? Have a really good experience for people. But for the most part, that's not the issue. The issue is normally that people think that no one's going to buy their stuff at a higher price point. So they sell at a lower price point, even though it's literally like making them cringe on the inside. So I do not recommend. Um, I do not recommend that you do that. So, okay. The other thing that I wanted to say, and I see you all's hands, we're going to take questions in like literally two minutes. So just raise your hand again at that time. Overcoming. So you got to chase the no, obviously you need to have a routine. We talked about the jump just to recap what we're talking about. We're talking about what I've learned after doing over 20,000 sales calls and selling in my business and doing it at a high level and selling both lower cost items like under $50 and also higher cost items over $100,000. Mindset is everything. You have to chase the no versus chasing the yes. Chase the no and then also dig a little deeper and get some data from that no that will actually help you to be more productive in the future. You're going to have to utilize what I like to call the Jones method of selling. And I didn't invent that. If you Google the Jones method of selling, I'm pretty sure that things will come up on it. Sales is something that a lot of people have talked about in the past and it's tried and true. There are just some sales theory stuff that works. There are a lot of sales experts you can hire and everyone puts their own spin on it, but sales is just something that I recommend you study. There's a book called the little red book of selling that I would recommend. I really like that book in terms of uh, as a sales book. Jones method of selling. We talked about having a routine that actually gets you in the mindset of going after what you want in life. And then we're going to talk a little bit overcoming objections is really, 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 really important. And, and I think that one of the things I realized about myself recently is that when someone objects to working with me for whatever reason, sometimes I will you know, follow up, give them a little bit more information. But there were other times that I would just say, okay, well, you know, it's no big deal. Like we have, we have a strong pipeline of people who are very excited to work with us. But what I realized is when you don't try to overcome the objections of the people who need what you have to offer, you are essentially operating from a prideful place and you're preventing them from getting what they actually need. And I want to clarify here that the way that I get people into my programs and work with us both through the law firm and through Speaker Rated Cash, it's a consultative method of selling. So it's not like, oh, I'm selling to everyone. I'm very clear about who I'm selling to, who I'm not selling to, who I speak to in my content, who I don't speak to in my content. My firm rarely represents someone who is just starting out in business. And that's mainly because that's mainly because our packages, the strategies that we provide are really for folks building big brands and they have to have gotten started already and they have to have enough uh, assets, have made enough sales really for it to make sense for them to bring on a, a firm of our caliber. So there's that. But every now and then we will, but we're just very clear about what we can do for them. Like if we could do a trademark, you know what I mean? If they're not ready to, to come on and have consistent legal counsel and actual mobile general counsel. But one of the things that I'll say is that you want to make sure that you don't punk out when it comes to the objections. If you really have qualified the person that you're speaking to and you know that they can benefit from what you have to offer them, you are doing them a disservice by not attempting to find out more about what the real objection is. I recently purchased from someone, it was like $7,500. And I told her no at first. And the reason I told her no was because I didn't, I was just, you know, I, I've invested in so much coaching. I was kind of coaching out. I was like, well, I already got, I already have all these coaches. Do I really need another coach? And what she was offering, I actually didn't need. And, you know, she didn't really, she didn't follow up. She wasn't like, okay, this is, you know, this is what I can offer you. Tell me more about, you know, what's preventing you from making the sale. But had she, had she just said, tell me a little bit more about what's preventing you from taking the next step. Then, and I'm going to give you guys a phrase that I think will really help you when you're having these sales conversations. Then she would have just sold me. She still sold me because I, I did my own research and figured out, all right, I'm, I'm going to work with this woman. But 
It would have been quicker if she just would have been like, you know, what's preventing you from taking the next step? Here's the question that I now ask people, especially people who are who are like, Ashley, I want to work with you. I want to join Speak Your Way to Cash Academy. I know I want to have six figure corporate offers. I don't have one now. I don't even know where to start. Those folks who actually are real experts, real thought leaders, the question that I ask them when they're like, oh, I'm no longer going to to do it or I'm not interested. I'm like, "Okay, great. Have your goals changed? That's it. That's the question that you should be asking your prospects. Have your goals changed? Because you told me originally that you want now, I collect information from people on the front end. So I know what they have told me their goals are. So if you're not doing that, that's a problem. I'm going to do a live soon, like three signs you need to fire your lawyer. One of them is if they don't ask questions, they're probably not going to uh, protect you in the manner that you need to be protected in. That's a whole nother topic for another day. But one of the questions that you need to ask is have your goals changed? Every single last one of us who are service providers, um, even products. You know, if you sell something that helps people get to a certain result, you need to know whether or not, like, what are their goals? And if they don't buy from you or they're not ready to take the next step, you need to find out if their goals have changed. If those goals haven't changed, then there's some other reason that's preventing them. Now, if it's price, like they genuinely can't afford it, my value system does not allow me to be the type of person that's like, oh, go to payday loan, go mortgage your house. I don't do all that. That's not, it, that's just not how I like to operate. However, if it's just a mindset thing, then we could talk about it. And most of the time we can just overcome it. It's just not a big deal. But it's all about keeping service at the center because if what you have can help people get to the next level, then you absolutely want to make sure that you're doing that. Um, the last thing that I'll cover before I take some questions, and if you're listening to this afterwards and you're like, I wanted to ask a question, then just feel free to email me um, at ashley at ashleynicolekirkwood.com. But the thing I recommend you do instead of pitching. So I talked about my sales job where I was literally like cold calling hundreds of people a day. It's not the most effective way to sell, but even with cold calling, we made sales. So the lesson there is even if I, even if you're just going to do like hundreds of cold calls a day, there are certain people that are still going to buy. But the other thing that I wanted to say is like, instead of pitching, what I recommend you do is invite people to experience what you have to offer. And this may be, you know, in your first interaction with them, instead of like, hey, I want you to buy this, blah, blah, blah. It's like, hey, join me for my live session on Friday. I think you'll really enjoy it. Or join me in this webinar I'm doing next week. I think you'll really enjoy it. And whether you're selling to consumers or to corporations, inviting people to experience you in your zone of genius is the best way to get them to trust you and hopefully like you. <laughs> and with that trust plus like, all you're doing after that is figuring out whether they have the budget to bring you in um, and to hire you. And that budget conversation, if I do a 40 minute call with a corporation about their the packages that we have to offer them through mobile general counsel on our consulting side, the price piece of it is like 10 minutes. It's the most insignificant piece of the discussion. I've qualified them on the front end, but that piece of it, people put a lot of weight on that little piece. But if you haven't done the fact finding, that portion of the call where you're getting more information from them, you're digging deep, you're co-creating vision with them. If you follow me for any period of time, you know, I'm big on that co-creating vision with your corporate client, then the, the price part is just like the last piece of it. So I highly recommend you invite them. That's that's a part of the paid method that we teach in our academy. But hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you've gotten something out of this discussion. I, I really just wanted to share those tips with you guys because whether you are a speaker selling corporations and colleges on the transformation you can provide to their employees or students or whether you are an entrepreneur that has your own business, you want to figure out whether sales is something that is a, a point of an opportunity of growth in your business and then you want to fix it fast. Because I'm telling you, in my opinion, it's easier to sell at the top of the market than it is to sell at the bottom of the market. But if you're going to sell and if you're going to sell items under $100 and that's your bread and butter, you just need to do that at scale. And that's really going to come from paid ads, et cetera. So the way that we sell involves conversations. And so that's kind of what we're talking about today versus like the paid ad strategy of selling. But yeah, definitely. Uh, if you have any questions, please, please, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining the Speaker Ready Cash podcast. All right. Wasn't that interview amazing? If you're anything like me, you have pages full of notes. But here's the thing. Before you head out, I want you to go to Facebook.com and join the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group. That is where I am. That's where a ton of other speakers are, a ton of other people who listen to the show. All We all congregate there and chat. And it's 100% free. Now, if you're ready to take your speaking career to the next level, I have two ways for you to do that. One, you can go to AshleyNicoleKirkwood.com slash SYWTC live replay and pick up the live replay. That training is seven modules, chock full of information. It's crazy. Go over there, read all about it. Or 
if you want a more personal experience, you're already, you already know that you want to be a speaker. You're ready to fully commit and you want someone to walk you through it and save you tons of time Googling and doing it on your own, then book a VIP day with me. You can go to AshleyNicoleKirkwood.com, scroll down until you see the VIP day section and get more information on that there. All right. Thank you guys again for watching. Please do not forget to leave us a review. That is how we keep this train rolling and get some of the best speakers in the world to get on this show. So please, please, please leave a review. Shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram and Facebook in the Speaker Way to Cash group, Instagram at, at the Ashley Nicole Show. And I'd be more than happy to chat with you and say hi. All right, y'all have an awesome, awesome day. <laughs>